My name is Felix, and in this video, I want to give you my thoughts on the Dyson Solar Cycle Morph, also previously known as the Dyson Light Cycle Morph. Everything I talk about in this video is based on me using the lamp for the past 18 months. I'll section the video into five parts, starting with the build and design of the lamp, followed by a brief overview of the functions and usage, then continuing with the things I don't like about the lamp and the things I do like about the lamp. And finally, I'll end the video with a verdict. The different parts will be linked with timestamps in the description box below, where you can also find my other social media profiles. Have a look if you're so inclined. Other than that, let's get started. So first I want to talk about the build and design of the lamp. The base and half of the upper extension arm are made out of plastic. The base itself is solid and gives confidence to the ability of the lamp not tipping over. The rest of the lamp is made out of aluminium polycarbonate composite. The lower extension arm is attached solidly to the stem itself. The extension arms are held in place by magnets that snap the lamp into place when in the ambient position. Towards the base, there is a USB-C port that outputs 7.5 watts of power, which is unfortunately not enough to drive a MagSafe charger. When in resting position, a small circular plastic part snaps up magnetically to prevent the light from flooding out. The power itself is delivered through two tiny wires that run parallel through the center of the stem. They're barely visible to the naked eye. It is an interesting design decision, and if you think about it and wonder how the power is getting delivered, which I never did accept while writing this script just now, it will surprise you when you eventually discover it yourself. As for the overall design of the lamp, I'd say it can be categorized as modern and minimalistic. The branding is discreet and barely noticeable. Now, let's get to the functions and the usage of the lamp. The stem and the lower extension arm can be rotated for 360 degrees horizontally. The upper extension arm can also be rotated 360 degrees horizontally. And additionally, the upper arm can further rotate 180 degrees vertically in either direction. This gives the LED head great positioning flexibility and is definitely something that makes this particular lamp stand out. On the upper surface of the upper extension arm are two touch sensitive sliders for adjusting the color temperature from yellow to blue and an intensity slider to adjust the brightness of the lamp. Right above the LEDs is a touch sensitive on off demarcation to power the light on and off. On the back side of the upper extension arm there are three buttons, a brightness sensor and a movement sensor. The functions of the three buttons are self-explanatory, as indicated by the icons. The first button from the right activates or deactivates the daylight synchronization. What this does is it adjusts and matches the color temperature automatically according to where you're located geographically and where the sun is in the sky. The synchronization can also be turned off simply by adjusting the aforementioned color and or intensity sliders on the upper surface. The middle bottom activates or deactivates the movement sensor. The detection radius of the movement sensor is around one meter. The sensitivity of the sensor is acceptable. And finally, the leftmost bottom activates or deactivates the brightness sensor. This supposedly adjusts the brightness of the lamp depending on the brightness of the environment. But um, personally, I never noticed this function making any difference. Maybe it's just very subtle, who knows. The lamp head itself is composed of six LEDs. It has a CRI of more than 90 out of 100, which is considered excellent. CRI, short for Color Render and Index, is an indicator of how faithfully a light source is able to show colors that are true to life in comparison to natural daylight. The LEDs also cover color temperatures between 2700 and 6500 Kelvin and can output up to 850 lumens. The light has a rated power of 11.5 watts. The light can also be controlled by the Dyson Link app, but as there are quite a few things to explain in regards to the app, I'll skip this part for now and make a separate and more detailed walkthrough video in the future. If it has already been done by the time you are watching this, I will link it in the corner right now and also in the description box below, so check that out if you're interested. If it hasn't been uploaded yet, you can subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss it. All right, now let's get to the things I don't really like about the lamp. First of all, I don't like the high gloss plastic used for the base and the upper arm. Considering you are paying $650 for a desk lamp, I think it is justified to expect the best and only the best materials. I don't really understand the decision to forego the beautiful aluminum used for the stem and instead go for a fingerprint prone, dust prone, high gloss, flimsy plastic shell. 
for the base. And what I further don't understand is the fact that Dyson decided to go the extra mile to engineer a brass pipe for extra heat dispersion to prevent the LEDs from overheating, but then coat half of it in a plastic shell. I'm not an engineer, but as far as I know, metal conducts heat more efficiently than plastic. And as a result, using a metal shell will disperse heat faster than a plastic shell, in theory at least. But what do I know? I'm not an engineer. Maybe it will get too hot. Comment down below what you think. What I also didn't like is the price. I bought this lamp on Black Friday 2020, so that's 15% off if my memory serves me right. If it weren't for the utility this lamp brings with it, I probably wouldn't have bought it in the first place. I read somewhere that people are actually using the 60-year LED longevity claim from Dyson to justify the price. They basically argue that you'll be only paying $10 a year in that case, and so it's justified. Now, I don't know about you, but personally, I'll not be using this lamp for the next 60 years. Hell, I don't even know if I'll be alive in the next 60 years. So in my opinion, the reasoning is just really impressive mental gymnastics that is bordering on delusion. As it stands, the lamp is very expensive, and a large amount of it is attributed simply to the pricing of Dyson products in general, and maybe the good design, but good again is subjective. Okay, now let's talk about the things I like. First, as I have hinted at before, I really like the utility that this lamp provides. While adjustable color temperature is not anything new and impressive, the ability to position a lamp with so much flexibility really sold me on this lamp. A few years ago, when I was still in law school, there were certain textbooks that were printed on very shiny paper. As a result of this, every time I tried to read those with my old desk lamp, some books were just reflecting the light so much that I had to basically turn off the desk lamp and just rely on ambient lighting, which was not ideal. Furthermore, even with those books that didn't reflect as much, the light from my prior desk lamp was always fixed at an angle. This in turn meant that there was always a shadow cast upon the opposite page from where the light was actually shining from. Unlike the other lamp I had, the Dyson can be positioned directly over the book, which negates most of the glaring and eliminates almost all of the shadows. If any glaring still persists, I can now just position the LEDs in such a way that it almost shines over my shoulder, eliminating all reflections. The same also applies to writing and drawing. The shadow of your hand and pen can be eliminated with ease by just one quick gesture. Now, of course, you can move any other desk lamp around the desk and achieve the same results. But where the Dyson really shines, no pun intended, is how easy and ex efficient it all is. Instead of moving everything out of the way to make space for the desk lamp, with the Dyson you can just quickly adjust the angle and position of the lamp with your hand. Instead of having to fight the cable of your desk lamp and watch out so that it doesn't accidentally knock over your coffee. And don't ask me how I know this. In the case of the Dyson you just notch around a bit and voila, it's done. For me the frustration this lamp has saved me from alone has probably justified its price. All the other points that are going to follow are just nice to have, like icing on the cake. Alright, so what I also like is the ambient lighting the lamp provides. It's nice and calming to look at, especially at night when I'm just browsing or writing on the iMac. The movement sensor also has proven to be very helpful when I have to pee at night. As I always have to walk past my desk from my bed, on my way to the bathroom it lights the path just enough so that I don't break my foot on my way or blind myself by turning on actual ambient light at 3 a.m. To conclude, I think the lamp is actually a good investment if you do a lot of reading, writing, or drawing on your desk. It isn't too ugly, but not pretty either. It is more like a really useful tool that you store away in your workshop instead of presenting it in your living room on a pedestal. If that is your goal or purpose, you should check out the following few lamps that I will blend in now. They are roughly in the same price range as the Dyson, but much better looking and much less utility focused. Pause the video to take a better look if you want. Other than that, like and subscribe if you made it this far and stay tuned for more videos. Goodbye.